Querying the cube without having aggregations added to the cube will work okay if we have small data volumes. But when we start working with millions or billions of records in the fact table, we'll need to add aggregations. We can think of aggregations as summary tables that Analysis Services builds and maintains automatically for us so that it can answer questions without having to add up individual fact table rows every time. To add aggregations, we can use a wizard, which starts by asking us about aggregation usage. For most purposes, we can just use the default values, and Analysis Services can determine which of the attributes within each dimension would make an appropriate aggregation candidate. An aggregation candidate is an attribute that becomes a column in the summary tables. Now even though I'm referring to summary tables, they don't really exist as tables, but it's an analogy that's useful for thinking about aggregations. Essentially what the aggregation usage page does here is indicate to analysis services whether or not to include an attribute in the consideration process. Until we have an advanced understanding of aggregations, it's just best to leave the default selections here. Then on the next page of the wizard, we need to provide counts for each attribute that will be considered for aggregations, and also for the fact table. The aggregation design wizard uses a mathematical algorithm to determine which attributes should be included in the aggregations, so it's comparing the number of distinct values contained within an attribute to the overall fact table count. So for example we see here territory where we have 11 distinct regions, 7 distinct countries, and 4 distinct groups. 4 is a very low percentage of our overall fact table records of 60,855 rows. Therefore group is very likely to be considered as an aggregation candidate. Similarly, 11 is a pretty small percentage of the overall fact table count as well, so it's likely to be an aggregation candidate also. As we start getting into larger and larger dimensions and larger and larger fact tables though, we'll find that we can have instances where the number of distinct values for an attribute will be 30% or higher of the fact table, and in that case the attribute will definitely not be considered for aggregation purposes. We can use the count button on this page to have the aggregation design wizard look at our tables and get the necessary counts based on the actual data in the tables right now. But during development we might not be working with our actual data set. That is, we might be working with just a subset of our total data. In which case we can manually provide the estimated counts to provide a more accurate representation of the relationship between the number of members within each attribute and our fact table. On the next page of the wizard, we choose our aggregation options. Most of the time, we'll use the option performance gain reaches some percentage, and 30% is a good starting point. This percentage represents the difference between the performance of queries without using aggregations and the performance of queries that do use aggregations, and we're looking for a 30% lift, or improvement in performance. Now we might think that getting a 100% performance gain would be the best possible option, but we can have too many aggregations. And if we have too many aggregations, our query performance actually slows down because Analysis Services has to evaluate each aggregation to come up with an execution plan. So generally speaking, a good place to start with aggregations is 30%. Then the wizard will analyze our data and determine how many aggregations, or the equivalent of summary tables, need to be created and added to our cube. We'll be able to view the structure of the aggregations after we close the wizard.